This is the third message I've recorded standing in an empty auditorium looking at empty chairs. Um, I'm so much looking forward to meeting it once again with the Saints of Hope Bible Church and hopefully it'll be real soon. I'm thankful for the tool of technology by which we can continue to record messages and put them online, but um, hearing a message online is one thing, but being with the Saints in person is another. And um, you know, I, I think about our online family, those who watch us regularly and consider us their church because they don't have a local church in their area. Um, you know, my heart goes out to you. And perhaps one day it'll work out. Uh, you can stop in and visit with us. We've had people over the past several years, a good number of people actually, that have stopped in and visited with us. And it's always a blessing to see them face to face and meet them in person. And and um, I think about what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 2.17, But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. And uh, again, thankful for the tool of technology. We can keep the, getting the word out. But that face-to-face -face fellowship, what a blessing. And, and I miss my church family dearly. And uh, you, you who are watching that are members of Hope Bible Church, you know, we're praying for you and we miss you. And we love you. We look forward to seeing you again soon. But I know this, the Lord could come today. And when he does, all the body of Christ will be gathered together unto him. And uh, what a meeting that'll be. And we'll have that fellowship face to face with the Lord and one another throughout eternity. We have surely a, a blessed hope. Take your Bible, please, and turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we'll begin there in just a moment for the message today. Let me encourage you to get your Bible out and open and follow along as we look at the Word of God together. And while you're finding that, let me say a few more things. You know, this coronavirus is not going to destroy Hope Bible Church by the grace of God. Uh, I think there are pastors that are very worried about what's going to happen to their churches as a result of having to miss services. Um, perhaps it's due to the fact that their people are not grounded and uh, not grounded in the truth of the Word of God. And so when they get out of church, they for a few weeks, they may just stay out. Um, and a lot of churches are trusting in a performance-based system. Uh, that they think going to church earn, earns God's blessings and God's favor. And they're very worried that having to miss church, that God's upset with them. And, uh, and then I think there's this fear of uh, paying the bills because a lot of churches are up to their eyeballs in debt. And um, I've heard pastors, when they talk about missing the services, they, they emphasize to the when they make these announcements. I've listened to several different ones. And they make these announcements to send out to their people. And they say, now, mail your tithes and offerings in. Just mail it in or give online and keep, keep that money coming in. And uh, I heard about one church that had a, 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 at the front door like a drive under. And they said, someone will be standing there. You pull up, give your money, and pull off. <laughs> they want to make sure they get that money coming in. But, you know, our people are not dependent on me to be fed the Word of God. They know how to study the Bible for themselves. I have endeavored as a pastor to not only teach and preach the Word of God, but to help equip the saints to know how to study the Word of God on their own. And our folks are in their Bible on a daily basis, and they'll continue to stay in the Word of God. Now, the Lord uses teachers and preachers to help us, and we're thankful for that. But what I'm saying is our folks know how to get in the Bible for themselves. And they know they're complete in Christ and accept in the beloved. They don't think that coming to church earns anything uh, with God. Uh, it adds nothing to their perfect standing before the Lord. Um, they put all their trust in who they are in Christ. They come to church because they want to, not because they're trying to earn God's favor. And, and by the grace of God, we have no debt. And we don't even take up an offering. We just trust the Lord and He provides. He always has and we trust He always will as we do His work. That's the promise in Philippians 4. Uh, my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. As you do the Lord's work, the Lord's way, you can trust that He'll take care of things, and He always has. Now, let's read here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and let's read verses 16 through 18. 
Here at the end of the epistle, in verses 14 to 22, we find 14 brief exhortations. You notice in verse 14, Now we exhort you, brethren. And then it's like rapid fire. He gives 14 exhortations. Let's look at three of them here in verses 16 through 18. Rejoice evermore. Only uh, John 11 verse 35 is shorter. That's the verse that says Jesus wept. Both verses have two words. This verse in John 11.35, but John 11.35 has less letters. Jesus wept. Rejoice evermore. Those two verses, you know, if you haven't memorized any scripture, that'd be a good place to start. John 11.35 and 1 Thessalonians 5.16. Then you can add to that verse 17, pray without ceasing. You can memorize three verses real quick today. Uh, those three. Just three words, verse 17, pray without ceasing. Verse 18, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I love when the word of God says very plainly, here's the will of God. If we would focus on what is revealed in the word of God for us to do, of course we need to rightly divide the word of truth, rightly divide the word of truth and know we're at in God's plan for the ages. Not everything in the Bible is for us to do, but when we rightly divide and we understand where we're living and Paul writes directly to us in this age of grace and we have a verse like this that says, this is the will of God. If we would focus on that, if we would focus on what is revealed, the things that aren't will kind of fall into place as we follow what we know to do. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It is the will of God for Christians to continually rejoice. He said rejoice evermore. To pray. He said pray without ceasing. To give thanks. He said in everything give thanks. Now in this present evil world, there are many things we're not thankful for. There are many things we can't rejoice in. But there are no circumstances we can face that we should not be thankful in. No matter what we go through, we can still rejoice in the Lord. We can still give God thanks. We can still pray. So no matter what we're going through, we ought to be able to rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. Just keep doing the things you know to do. Now, who was more thankful than the Apostle Paul? I mean, as you read through his epistles, again and again, he's giving God thanks. And yet... He was often in very difficult circumstances. He suffered much in the work of the ministry. He went through much hardship and opposition and, and dealt with trouble and problems and pain and sorrows and on and on. Yet, he's always rejoicing. He's always thankful. And that's because peace and contentment are not based on circumstances. They are found in Jesus Christ and he's always the same we can we can trust him day by day and rejoice in the Lord nothing we face in this life can take away the spiritual blessings we have in Christ we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and nothing can change that we're going to talk uh, about how we can be giving thanks even in the midst of a pandemic <laughs> And I'm going to give you some things that I'm thankful for during this time and what we're dealing with. Uh, but before I give you those points, let me read to you from Romans chapter 8. Just a great passage to remind us that nothing we face can change who we are in Christ and what we have in Christ. We're not going to go through the prophesied great tribulation that's coming on this world. We're not going through it. We're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air before that can ever be fulfilled. But we must go through tribulation in this life because we live on this planet that's under the bondage of corruption. We live in a fallen world and fallen bodies. And Romans 8 talks about sufferings of this present time. Uh, just because we live in this under this curse. And he says in verse 22, we know the whole... Creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And so, even though we're not going through the worst that's coming, 
it could still get bad now. And uh, yet, no matter what we face, can change who we are in Christ and what we have in Him. Let's pick it up in verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. As we deal with infirmities, we have the Spirit of God within us to make intercession. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. I'm glad the Holy Spirit's making intercession. I'm glad the Lord Jesus Christ is making intercession. And it's on that basis we have this wonderful promise, verse 28. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Not everything that we deal with in this life is good, but when it's all said and done, it'll all work together for good. The good God has purposed for us and what, what He's promised us, He will fulfill it all. and Nothing can stop it from happening. He said, we know, not we, we think, or maybe, but we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. That's talking about all believers in the body of Christ. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son. Predestination has to do with our destiny as members of the body of Christ. Uh, when we choose to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are predestinated to be conformed to the image of His Son. Predestination has to do with God's purpose. It's not saying some are predestined to hell and others to heaven. No, it's saying those that are saved are predestinated to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. I mean, it's, it's so sure. It's spoken of in the past tense. It's a done deal. It's settled. It's a guarantee. I haven't been glorified yet, but I've been predestinated. So it's, it's, a, it's a done deal. I'm already seated in heavenly places in Christ. Uh, so uh, you're talking about assurance and talking about confidence and security and salvation. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? You know, there's a lot of people stuck in religion. They, they would love to know the truth of this verse, if God be for us. See, religion has them scared thinking God's always against them. But if you're in the body of Christ, God is for us. And what a joy it is to know who you are in Christ. You're not going to find that in religion. You're going to find that in the Word of God. He said, if God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And he lists all kind of awful things that we may have to face in this life. Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril of sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter, nay, and all these things. In all these things. We're going to have to go through these things. But in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise the Lord for the truth of what we just read. I really would like to go back and expound through there and, and teach on this passage. I love this passage, but that's not the point of the message today. just want to start it out reading that just to remind us that no matter what we go through, no matter what our circumstances are, we're more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Now, there are many bad things about the current coronavirus pandemic, sickness, death, Unemployment, these things are not enjoyable. Thankfully, so far, it's maybe not as bad as what people thought it might be. And I don't know what's going to happen from here. I'm not, I'm not a prophet, neither is anybody else that may pretend to be. I don't know where this thing is headed. Hopefully, it's going to 
uh, end up, hopefully we'll be able to look back on it and say, well, it wasn't as bad as what they were saying it was going to be. But nonetheless, I'm not minimizing what sorrow people have already experienced in this. And many people are fearful. They're worried. They're frustrated. They're discouraged. There are things that happen in life that we cannot control and we can't do anything about. But what we can control is how we respond to what happens. As Christians, we should respond to bad things and bad circumstances and troubles and problems and sorrows and so on. We should respond with faith and prayer and peace and hope because of all we have in the Lord. Now, can any good thing come out of this pandemic? I mean, is there anything that we can be positive about and say, hey, I'm thankful for this in the midst of all this? Well, I think there is. I'm going to give you some things here. I'm thankful during this time, I'm thankful, first of all, that I am saved from the worst disease, that of sin. I'm saved from sin and from the wrath to come. This coronavirus is nothing compared to that awful disease called sin. And when you study that in the Word of God, hey, it talk about a death rate, it's 100%. The wages of sin is death. And sin is an awful disease. And you can't, there is no human remedy. You can't fix it. Thank God we have a Savior. And He paid the price of our sins and offers us salvation full and free. And we can have much assurance that we're saved. I'm so thankful for that. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 5, Paul said, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. There's power in the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Romans 1.16 it's much assurance. You can know that you're saved. The gospel of our salvation is that Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4. That's the gospel by which we're saved. The gospel that was revealed to the, the apostle Paul for this age of grace. When you realize you're a lost sinner and you deserve death and hell for your sins, and there's nothing you can do to fix it, and you put all your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross when He died for our sins, shed His blood. Look, sin must be paid for, and He paid the price in full and died for our sins, and He won the victory because on the third day He rose again. That's the power of God and the salvation when you simply believe. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, trusting in His death, burial, and resurrection, you can know that you're saved. Much assurance because God cannot lie and God cannot fail. If salvation was up to you, you would, you would, um, you would have no assurance whatsoever because you know you can't do it. But because it's up to the Lord, you can rest in His finished work and have that assurance. Hey, I know I'm saved. I'm already seated in heavenly places because the moment you believe the gospel, you're baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ, seated in heavenly places, Ephesians 2, 6. I mean, I know I'm going to heaven. I'm already there as far as my spiritual standing is concerned. Paul said our conversation is in heaven, Philippians 3, 20. I'm just looking to go, and I'm still looking to go by way of the rapture, not death. But even if I die before the Lord comes, to depart and be with Christ is far better. I know I'm saved. I know all my sins are forgiven. I know I'm on my way to heaven. And I praise the Lord that, hey, this coronavirus, what a disease. You know what? But I've already been delivered from the worst thing there is. It's called sin. I'm saved. I'm saved. From sin. I'm saved from the penalty of sin. It was death and hell. I'm being saved from the very uh, power of sin in my daily walk as I learn to walk in the Spirit more and more yielding to who I am in Christ. And I will yet be saved from the very presence of sin when the Lord comes and gives me a new glorified body fashioned like unto His body. Hey, I'm saved and uh, I'm not going to face the wrath of God. And I'm not going to face the wrath to come that's coming on this world. 1 Thessalonians 1.10 To wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. I've been delivered from that. I'm, not, I'm talking about there is a prophesied wrath coming on this world. And if you think something like a coronavirus is bad... 
you ain't seen nothing yet. I mean, you read the book of Revelation and see what's coming, uh, but I'm not going to be here for any of that. The whole book of Revelation is future, and I'm living in the mystery age. God is building the mystery of the body of Christ. It was hid from the prophets, first revealed to Paul when he made that revelation known and began to build this body of Christ. That prophetic uh, calendar was put on hold. It was interrupted concerning Israel and the nations. It can't be fulfilled. It won't be fulfilled until the body of Christ is taken out of here. 2 Thessalonians 2 says that we must be, ta- it says he must, be, until he be taken out of the way. Um, I believe he's talking about the body of Christ. The man of sin cannot come on the scene until he be taken out of the way. And I believe that's the body of Christ taken out of the way in the rapture. We're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And then there's that final seven years that was prophesied uh, to come on Israel and the nations uh, before the second coming of Christ. That'll be fulfilled after we're gone. And I'm not going through any of it. I've been saved from the wrath to come. First Thessalonians 5 verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Talking about the glorification, being saved from the wrath to come and being saved uh, from this vile body, getting that new glorified body. Now, there are those who say, well, the wrath of God doesn't come till the very end of the 70th week. And so the church has to go through the 70th week and they'll get caught up at the end of it. Well, I got news for you. The whole 70th week is a subject of prophecy and we're the mystery. If you rightly divide the word of truth, you won't be put in the body of Christ in any of the tribulation. We're preaching the gospel, the grace of God. But in that time, they're going to be preaching the gospel, the kingdom. Read it in Matthew 24. This gospel, the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations. Then the end shall come. And if you think that's the same thing as the gospel, the grace of God, then you have the Lord Jesus making a mistake because he said that in the first century. And Paul said the gospel he preached did go in all the world. Read it in Colossians 1. And here it is 2,000 years later and the end still hasn't come. No, it's a different message. No, uh, we're preaching the gospel of the grace of God. We're here as ambassadors for Christ, but we got to be taken out of the way before God resumes his dealings with Israel. Then that gospel of the kingdom will be preached once again. And you can't mix these things. But the whole reason the Antichrist even shows up and deceives the world is because of God's wrath. He is judging the world because they've rejected his truth. The whole seven years is because of the wrath of God. Yes, it builds. His wrath builds and builds till it's finally and fully poured out at the end. But, but the whole thing has got to do with the wrath of God, and that's not what we're appointed to. So I thank the Lord during this pandemic, because when I think about what's coming on this world, it's going to be so much worse than what we're seeing right now. But I ain't got to go through any of it. Yeah, I got to go. We got to go through some bad stuff in this life, no doubt. But um, the best is yet to come for us. We're going to get out of here before it gets as as bad as it's going to get. And the best is yet to come for us who know the Lord. For the world, the worst is still yet to come. I'm thankful I'm on the winning side. All right, number two, I'm thankful uh, that evil places are being closed for a while. I think about, well, I'll be honest with you, I think about churches. I think about churches in this country that are preaching a false gospel and they're teaching false doctrine and they're deceiving people and damning people. I'm glad they're closed down and uh, I hope they stay closed down. The Bible said, ye that love the Lord hate evil. Uh, in Psalm 119, talks about loving the Word of God and therefore you hate every false way. And uh, so, you know what? There's so many churches out there that are in Satan's mystery of iniquity. I say churches, you know, so-called churches. They're not the, the real thing in the Word of God. But you know what I'm saying. Out there in the religious world, I'm glad a lot of them are close down and look for us even though we're not holding services the word of God's still going out like right now in this message on YouTube but um, you know not only these evil churches but and by the way let me just say before I move on from that um, Satan is in religion he's the God of this world 2 Corinthians 4 he's in the so called churches out there He has another Jesus and another spirit and another gospel. And he has his ministers and all that counterfeit stuff. It's called the mystery of iniquity. All right, but uh, there's a lot of people complaining about the schools being closed down. You know what? The government schools, as far as I'm concerned, 
I'm glad they're closed down. I wish they'd stay closed down. Now, look, I realize there's some Christian people that work in the government schools, and they're trying to make a difference and doing the best they can, and I'm, I'm happy they're there doing what they can do. But, you know, uh, the curriculum, the propaganda, the, the, the programming that's going on, the environment, it's so bad. It's so anti-Christ. You know, I think a whole lot more families ought to be homeschooling their children. I think that'd be a wise thing to do. And so it doesn't bother me at all that the government schools are closed down. We've, we've been homeschooling our children for years. And you know what? They're not behind at all. Uh, they excel. And because we do it the right way, my wife does a great job with our children, with, with the homeschool. And so I, I'm, I'm be honest with you. I mean, the, these schools, what's going on in them today, what's being taught and the things that are going on, it's not a bad thing. They're closed down. And, and you could talk about other things like bars being closed down. That's a good thing. I mean, you know, you've got... You think about, on average, I, I saw the other day, on average, uh, in America, every year, on average, there's 88,000 alcohol-related deaths. I mean, where, where is all the uh, concern in the media? How come they don't want to shut down the alcohol? It's, it's doing so much damage. It's killing so many people. It's wrecking so many homes and lives. But they don't seem to care about that at all. But I'm glad that a lot of these places, there's some bad places out there that have to be closed. And so I'm thankful for that. All right, number three, I'm thankful to be an American. Even though we got a lot of problems in this nation, I'd still rather live here, I guess, than most anywhere else in this world. Now, we live in a very advanced civilization. We have great hospitals and doctors. And, um, you know, um, it's just, you think about, the death rate with this virus right now, it seems to be pretty low. And I think it has a lot to do with uh, what we have here in America. I've gone to other countries, a number of other countries on, on different uh, missions trips. And I've been, I've been to places where they told me, look, whatever you do, don't get sick. Because if you, you don't want to go to the hospital here, trust me, that type of thing. But uh, here in the Atlanta area, we got some of the greatest hospitals in the country, and there's many great hospitals. Uh, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not a. <laughs> don't misunderstand me. I realize the answer is not in just hospitals and medication. But hey, I'm glad we have it. It's there, you know, when you're really hurting and you're going through a physical problem. It, you, you know, thankful that we have all the advancements we have. I know, uh, I know medication gets abused and there's bad things and all that and, uh, and doctors are not infallible and there's issues, but still and yet, still and yet, uh, I'm thankful that uh, we have the advances that we have and, and especially with the technology again, even though we're not having church, I can stand here and record this message and put it online and people from anywhere in the world, for the most part, can access this message. And so we can keep doing the work and keep getting the word out. I'm thankful for that. And, I, and I'll say another thing I'm thankful for is the furtherance of the gospel. Philippians chapter number 1. Philippians chapter number 1, verse number 12. Paul said uh, in Philippians 1, 12, But I would, uh, you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather into the furtherance of the gospel. Paul was in bonds. He was a prisoner. He said, look, it, this happened to me, but it's, it's fallen out rather into the furtherance of the gospel. Um, you know, that's always the main thing. Paul wasn't sitting there throwing himself a pity party. Here he is, a prisoner, writing to people on the outside, trying to cheer them up and tell them to rejoice in the Lord. He said, look, I, I rejoice that Christ is preached. And what's happened to me is for the furtherance of the gospel. Notice, by the way, he said, that which happened unto me. There are things that just happen. This coronavirus just happened, okay? It's not... Something that God sent from His very hand in order to judge people. We did a message not long ago on that dispensationally. We're not living during the time of God's judgment on the world. That will come. But there are things that just happen. And uh, yet, 
it can be for the furtherance of the gospel. And I see this as an opportunity. There are people that are fearful and they're worried. And, uh, hey, I, I'm trying to talk to everybody I can about the Lord and, and tell them about the peace I have. I have peace with God. I have the peace of God. And that's available to them if they'll trust the Lord. And I try to, you know, be a faithful ambassador for Christ. And uh, when bad things are going on and people seem to think a little bit more seriously about some things, it's a good opportunity to get the gospel out. So let's keep doing that. The furtherance of the gospel is always the main thing. I'll say another thing. I'm thankful during this time for m more time for personal Bible study, meditation, and prayer. Now, I try to do that regularly, but uh, right now the, my schedule's not quite as hectic as it was, and I have even more time to enjoy and studying the Word of God and meditating in what I'm studying and praying to the Lord. Psalm 46.10 said, Be still and know that I am the Lord. You know, a lot of people in our country, they, they, they are never still. They're never quiet. They never put their thoughts on God. Well, maybe, uh, especially these folks that are in um, some of these places are pretty strict right now. They don't want people leaving their houses unless absolutely necessary. Uh, and I don't know if it's going to get that way for everybody or not. I hope not. But nonetheless, if you have to stay at home, why not take advantage of the opportunity and get still and get quiet and study the Word of God meditate on what you're studying and talk to the Lord about it. That's never wasted time. That's always time well spent. Get in the Word of God. What a joy to have the Word of God. And study the Word of God and talk to the Lord and meditate on the things. And you got to meditate on it because meditation is to the soul what digestion is to the body. To get nourished in the Word of God, you really need to think deeply upon what you're learning and what you're studying. I'll say another thing. I'm thankful for more family time. Uh, you know, I, I, again, I try to protect time with my family. I enjoy my family. It's my first ministry. It's a top priority for me. And I try to always have family time, good quality family time, but we have even more of it now with a less hectic schedule uh, we can spend more quality time together. In my family, we've been enjoying our time together and doing some stuff around the house together and getting things done and talking to each other and just being around each other even more. Uh, you know, hey, serve the Lord as a family. I talk about personal Bible study, but don't leave your family behind. Um, talk to them about what you're studying. And, and communicate with them and study the Word of God together and pray together and spend time together. I like how Joshua said, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15. And sometimes people leave their family behind. They get real zealous in their study of the Word of God, but then their, their spouse and their children don't know anything about the book. Don't leave your family behind. Spend time with your family and be thankful uh, for this precious time to spend with them. A couple more things here. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the reminder not to take things for granted. <coughs> Excuse me. I knew that was coming eventually. I've been outside all day and the pollen is just brutal right now. Um, <clears throat> I'm surprised I made it almost to the end of the message without sneezing. I'm thankful for the reminder not to take things for granted. You know, things like this, you know, when it brings about changes in your daily life, um, it reminds you of some things. You know, I, when there's a serious disease that's very contagious going around, it makes you more mindful of your family and taking care of your family and being thankful for your family. And uh, I'm thankful for my church. And when we can't meet... Um, it reminds me just how precious they really are to me. And uh, I, I tell you, I love the meeting of the saints. And I'm, I'm so looking forward to getting back to that. So I think for our folks, it'll only strengthen us that, hey, I think our folks are thankful for our church. But having them miss several weeks will make them even more thankful, make them realize what they have. Now, sadly, there are probably going to be some people out there in different churches that drop out as a result because they were just looking for an opportunity to leave and they're going to use this as that opportunity. But if your heart is in your church, going through a time like this, you'll communicate with the, the folks in your church. You'll call, you'll text, you'll 
uh, be praying and you'll be looking forward to getting back together in the in the assembly. And I'm thankful for freedom we have still in this country. And um, some of that's being restricted right now and it makes you more thankful and, and, and reminds you don't take it for granted that we have the freedom we still do. To be able to go and do and uh, the things we need to do. Um, you know, some of that's changed right now because of what's going on but it ought to remind you not to take that for granted there are things we take for granted we take lightly and we shouldn't we need to be thankful and this is a good reminder and i'll say lastly this is a good reminder i'm thankful during this pandemic because it's a good reminder of how quickly things can change uh, you know sometimes we get in a rut we think we think and we act like things will just keep going on like they are indefinitely no, things can change in a hurry. And um, uh, what's going on with this virus thing, man, it's, it's put everything in ca just, I don't know, chaos, really. It's just changed so much, and I fear that there's going to be long-lasting effects from this in our country. But uh, we know things can change in just a moment. And we ought, to, we ought to keep that in mind, especially the Lord could come in just a moment. That's our blessed hope, and we're looking for that. But in just a moment, we'll be out of here. And so that ought to create in us a sense of urgency to do the Lord's work while we can. He left us here to be ambassadors for Christ. Let's be about the work He's given us to do. Let's have a sense of urgency. We don't have forever to get the job done. Let's get the gospel out. Let's teach the Word of God rightly divided. Let's show, you know, there's lost people that are blinded to the gospel. They need to, to hear the lie of the gospel. And, but then there are people who are saved and they're in darkness because of traditions of men and religion. They need to be brought into further light. You know, you're brought out of darkness into light when you get saved. But to walk in the light and grow in the knowledge of the Lord, you need to learn the word of God rightly divided. And there's a great work for us to do. There's a great need. Those of us who know we have the word of God, in the King James Bible, and we know the gospel, the grace of God, and all of its clarity and purity, and we know how to rightly divide the word of truth, understanding the age in which we're living, and what was revealed through the Apostle Paul concerning this age of grace in the body of Christ, and all that that entails. There's such a great need uh, for us to keep going. It's the answer to all the isms and the schisms and the confusion out there in the religious world. God's entrusted us with the answers. And uh, we don't know it all, but we know the answers to the biggest questions. And we want to keep learning and growing and knowing more in order that we might help others and minister to others. There's a great need. There ought to be a sense of urgency. Well, what are you focused on? What are you focused on? The worst case scenario as we go through this coronavirus are you, are you fearful of the worst case scenario, listening to the talking heads on TV as they try to uh, talk about and guess what might happen? Are you focused on all the media hype and hysteria? They're trying to keep everybody scared to death so they'll keep watching their shows. What are you focused on? Focus on the Lord and you can rejoice and be thankful and content even in the midst of a pandemic. Trust in the Lord. There are things to be thankful for. I didn't cover it all. This is not exhaustive. But I talked about I'm thankful that I'm saved from the worst disease. And I'm saved from the wrath to come. I'm thankful that there are evil places that are closed down right now. I'm thankful to be an American with all the advancements we have. I'm thankful for the furtherance of the gospel during this time. For more time for personal Bible study, meditation, and prayer. For more family time. Um, I'm thankful. And let me stop and say this about the family time. I, I've actually, you know, you hear people even complaining. Now, now, I haven't heard it in our church, but uh, there are people out there that are complaining that their kids are at home. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. They ought to be rejoicing and cherishing uh, the opportunity and the time they have with their family. And children are a blessing, not a burden. I'm thankful for more family time. I'm thankful for the reminders, the reminder not to take things for granted, and the reminder of just how quickly things can change. I'm thankful even in this pandemic. And I hope it goes away soon and, and, um, and uh, we'll get back to 
a thing the way things were as far as meeting together as a church family. But until then, we'll just keep preaching the word, teaching the word, and I hope you'll follow the messages online. I hope this was a help to you today. Thank you for watching.